Alright, hello everybody and welcome back to Rogue Leader Gaming and welcome back to another Deer Elf Valley tutorial. Today, we're taking a look at the S282 uh, in Deer Elf Valley. This is one of the oldest engines in the game and it has received a fair amount of work. So, um, before we get started, I'd like to remind everybody to like, subscribe, come check us out live, twitch.tv slash Rogue Leader Gaming, where we do this series, we do, we play this game every Saturday morning. Uh, I usually try to start around, uh, around about 11, sometimes 10, but usually around about 11 o'clock US Central on Saturday mornings, um, playing some Derail Valley. This is the 282 in the game, which, we, you know, we didn't talk about last time. We talked a little bit about how Steam works, which for those who don't know how Steam works, I'm actually going to go ahead and briefly cover that again, because so, you can actually see on this, because there's no... There's no water tanks on the side. So you can actually see this here. This here is the firebox from the outside. So obviously from the inside, uh, you have your firebox right there. That's the flu sheet back there. And that's what all the gas and hot air um, goes to the front of the boiler and kind of radiates out, heating up the water in the boiler. And then you have the boiler, which is full of water, and that water gets turned into steam because the fire goes into here. The valve determines the timing of when the steam is getting pushed into the piston on which side, pushing the piston in one direction and the other, which turn, thus turns the wheels. And then the used steam gets exhausted out of the stack. Actually, before we, before we take a look at this thing, I want to talk about one more thing. So that's how steam works, but... What about 282? What does the 282 mean? I haven't really talked at length about this on, on most of the other um, engines, but uh, all of the lettering behind the um, locomotive's like name or whatever has a meaning. The DM3 is, that stands for diesel mechanical with three axles. The DH4 is a diesel hydraulic with four axles. Uh, in steam locomotives, instead of measuring axles, we use uh, white classification which is based on the number of total wheels. This is a, the other one is an 060, meaning it has zero wheels in the front, um, six drivers, those are the wheels that actually make it go, and uh, zero wheels in the back. With this one, you can see we have two wheels in the front. These are non-powered wheels. They're just there to help guide the locomotive um, through curves and support some of the weight but not too much weight because you want all the weight on your drivers so that you get better traction. Uh, and then you have your drivers, in which case this, we have eight of these, uh, four on each side. And then we have two more wheels trailing, which again, guided around curves and support the weight of the firebox. But uh, that's the basics of, of, of white classification. That is, that's why it is the S282, it's steam and it's a 282 wheel arrangement. It's been in the game for a very long time. Um, I can't remember whether or not the headlight has been modeled. I think it has. I think the headlight's been there. But something that has changed on this, it's a little hard to see right now, but as the sun, sun's over there. As the sun comes up, can we see it on this side a little bit better? Uh, we can. So you, as you can kind of see, the locomotive used to be all black. But in this update, it's actually changed to have, it's a very dark and dirty red. But all the side rods and the um, wheels and the frame, actually, if you look closely, has all actually been painted red on this thing. And it's actually really, really neat. But yeah, the, I love this new coloration. It just adds a little bit of flair to this thing that it didn't have before. And it gives it a little bit of hint of European to help fit it in with everything else. Because it, it is a very American looking lo locomotive to me anyway, um, at a first glance. Um, other than that, most of the... Uh, Changes are, um, involve a bit of the internals and the simulation, of course. But, uh, let's go ahead, at this point, the last thing I want to talk about before we fire this thing up, uh, is, um, a bit of brief hif history. So this, unlike everything else, this isn't actually directly inspired by anything. Which is why it doesn't really look like anything, but it looks... It appears vaguely similar to the US ATC S200. Vaguely similar, but 
it is it is possible that this um, may have been inspiration. And it is also possible that that is just a simple coincidence. But that seems to be the closest analog that we're able to find of what this could be. But and that was a locomotive that was exported to the Middle East during World War II, uh, exported from the U.S. Um, in 1941 and 42. And um, like I said, it could be based off of that, but also and it, it definitely looks like it could have been something like that. It looks like it looks like something made by like a U.S. based locomotive works like Alco or Baldwin, but exported to Europe um, for something or whatever, you know. But then finally, uh, the stats. So the license costs fifty thousand dollars. It has a mass. So the mass is calculated a bit interestingly. So it has 150 ton mass, but that's counting the whole thing. The locomotive itself just has 100 tons of mass. The tender has 50 tons of mass. So unlike the 060, which is a, a tank engine, uh, you have this thing actually has a tender, which is where all of the fuel and water is stored. Obviously, the tender is non powered and so really doesn't contribute very much. And so again, that's where that extra 50 tons comes from. Which is why the load rating is only a thousand tons instead of fifteen hundred tons, because you're only taking into account the weight of the locomotive. Also, whenever you're taking a look at your um, your job, here's a good example. I'll bring this one up really quickly. So this ex this is job is um, seven hundred and forty one ton train mass. So the thing to think about with load rating is this is actually not a seven hundred and forty one ton train. It is actually closer to 791 tons because you got to add that extra 50 from the tender. That is, it is basically dead weight that you have to drag around all the time. But also, it's where all your it's where all your gas is, so you got to have it. But you got to keep that in mind if you take a job that is just barely within the limits of a thousand tons. Keep in mind your tender might push it over the limit, so just be aware. And then, of course, the length is broken down as well. Uh, so you, it is in total, the length is 21.15 meters, um, and breaking, breaking it down again, the locomotive itself is 13.15 meters, and the tender is 8 meters even. So, uh, those are the stats, so be sure to keep that in mind. Now, that the rain has finally stopped, I can see clearly now the rain has gone. Let's go ahead and get this thing fired up. So, like the 060 that we've already talked about, you're going to need a shovel and a lighter in order to get this going. Obviously, you got the firebox. Go ahead and fill it up with coal. Now, with the 060, it takes three shovels. With this, however, it seems to take three and one quarter shovels in order to fully fill it. Uh, so keep that in mind. But honestly, you can honestly just throw it throw coal in until it's full or just throw three shovels or whatever but we're going to come in we're going to light it and the fire is going to start going down start building pressure just like in the 060 the water gauge is going to be at the bottom and it's going to slowly rise up as the water starts to boil over uh, that fire temp is going to come up that pressure is going to come up we want to go ahead and turn the damper down uh, whenever you have the damper down, that gives it more air. Whenever you have it up, it gives it less. Uh, we already need to shovel more coal into the coal hole. And, uh, man, it is, it is already red hot, so we don't even really need the blower at this point. So the next thing that we're going to go ahead and do, though, while that goes and gets started, we are going to go ahead and grab our appliances. So just like the 060, we have to turn on the lubricator the air pump and the dynamo. The, these, however, in the o, in the 060, they're all located uh, at the front and they're all located. Uh, the lubricator is located on the one side and the other two are all located on the same side. For this one, it's a bit different. So for this one, you have right here is your lubricator right above the right piston. So go ahead and turn that on. We'll go ahead and climb up here and take a look. And this is the knob for the air pump. It's very hard to see the air pump, but it is there. So this is the air pump is right here. It is modeled, but 
it is kind of hidden. So go ahead and get that turned on. But that's the air pump. And then just for the sake of it, I'm going to come over to this side, but it really doesn't matter. But the knob is on this side. You're going to come over here all the way at the back up by the cab on the top of the boiler. That's where we have our dynamo. Uh, and so we're going to go ahead and turn that on. That powers all of our electrics. And the air, air pump, like I said in the 060 video, that powers our brakes specifically, which is, you know, brakes are extremely important. All right. So going ahead and getting started, we will go ahead and cover our appliances first, and then we will cover uh, firing. So first of all, uh, here's the fun part about this locomotive. So this is how to turn your cab light on. You get the lantern, you hit F to, nope, not F, you hit R to be able to place it, and you place it down on this little thing here. Or alternatively, there's another stand right here, and there's another stand right here. Uh, this thing doesn't have a cab light. <laughs> I was messing around with this last night when I realized that. Um, I, haven't, I hadn't driven this thing until last night in the new update, and I was like, where's the cab light? I was looking all over this place for it. So like, where is the cab light? And then I realized, you know what? There isn't one. <laughs> There's a spot for a lantern. So you're going to have to go buy a lantern if you want to run this thing at night, pretty much at all. Uh, or a flashlight or something. So do keep that in mind. <laughs> um, but you do, however, have headlights. So in this locomotive, you have, um, if we look at the front here, Unlike the others, you only have the one light up at the top of the smoke box. So the 060 has, like, um, kind of ditch lights, I guess you would call them, um, on, like, the pilot, the, the front bar just above the, uh, I'm an American, what are those things called? Buffers, yes, that. <laughs> just above the buffers. Uh, so, but this one only has the one, and so it operates everything. So with this one light, uh, we can see obviously right now that it's off. Obviously it's daytime, so we're not really going to be able to see the full spread. So you're kind of going to have to take my word for it. Because I've already slept, and so I can't turn at nighttime, unfortunately. So this is our knob for our light. So it's on the fireman's side. This is our headlight knob. So pushing it up will turn the headlights on for the front. Pushing it off will turn the headlights on for the tender light, which you can see right there. Uh, you flip it up to up the once, you come up to the front, and that's just your running light. It really isn't casting any actual light, but it is on again, and you have your low beams. It's a little, you can almost about see the beam, and you can see kind of the angle. It is just simply angled a little bit low, and then turn it on full on for the high beams, you can kind of see a little bit more that the angle has changed and now it's angled more upwards. And so, same thing with the rear. Since we're in the day, I'm just going to turn it on to the running light for forward. Um, and then you have the gear light, which if we go ahead and turn this on, so there's no headlight. But what this thing does have is actually a pretty neat feature for you to be able to see the wheels at night using this light right here. Which is actually really, really cool because not necessarily on everything, but on some locomotives, you actually did have a light that was like this on the side and it was kind of just a light there for no reason. Why is that there? Well, I'll get to it in a minute, but what the light in the game is for is for you to better be able to see your wheels to see if you're wheel slipping. That's the thing. But the funny part about this light, it actually does exist in the real world. And what it's typically what it was used for in the real world is that there were some railroads that didn't have those speedometers. And so instead you could basically look at the ground and kind of be able to judge roughly how fast you were going, but also speed limits were all relative. 20 miles an hour could mean 25, it could mean 15. As long as you were going within the timetable. Things were a lot different back then and you had different types of scheduling and everything. 
And so with that, you would basically just look onto the ground and say, hmm, this feels like we're doing about 20 miles an hour. You know, whereas if you're going 40, you're like, hmm, this feels like about 40. You know, and so, so you had this light and it would shine on the ground at night so that you could still see the ground going by underneath of you and still roughly be able to figure out how fast you were going at night. Because otherwise, it was dark. You couldn't see crap. Um, but that's actually what that light was originally for. Also, it would shine a little bit on the gears of the locomotive, and so, so if something was a little bit off, you would probably be able to see it. But that's a little bit of cool history on that light there. So, aside from that, those are all of your lights. Um, the last two things before we get to firing and, and running the train um, is the bell and the whistle. So this thing has a bell, like the 060. And it's this knob here. It's an air rung bell. And so it's using compressed air uh, to run the bell. And that's what it sounds like. And it's a lot prettier sounding than the one on the 060, if I, if I do say so myself. Go ahead and turn that off. And now I will show you guys my favorite part of this update. Those of you who know, if you modded anything on this game before this update, you probably modded the whistle on the steam engine because yee, uh, it was not great. It was very synthy and, and not great at all. But now we have this. I'm just going to shut up for a moment. I'm going to cut the music and just let you hear this. It's so good! <laughs> it's so good! That is easily my favorite part of this update, is that's the whistle in the vanilla game. It's just so pretty. I don't actually know what, what kind of whistle it is, for sure, but I just know that it, it is so pretty. It's so awesome! Like, I feel like an- like, I feel awesome whenever I'm pulling that thing. Oh, imagine pulling that thing in VR. I wish I had a VR headset so bad. That would be like the greatest feeling ever to pull that whistle in VR. Oh my gosh. It's so... I just... I can't get enough. It's so good. It sounds so much cooler. Um, so with that, let's now go ahead and get into firing. So if you watched the video on the 060, if you haven't watched the video on the 060, I highly recommend it. Um, please go check that out because um, we're going to be kind of going a little bit faster here. For firing this, obviously, usually for a steam locomotive, you have an engineer and a fireman. Engineer drives the train, fireman put, shovels the coal and, and does the water. But in Dero Valley, there's no multiplayer, so you are both. So you've got coal. You shovel coal into the coal hole. From there, you've got the damper. So the damper, uh, of course, as we've mentioned before, um, up is uh, going to burn your fire hotter, but it's also going to burn your coal. It's going to use more fuel. It's going to burn faster. Down, and it's going to burn a little bit cooler, um, and it's going to burn slower, which is useful. Um... But whenever you're moving, you want to kind of pull it back up. Anyway, so you got your blower here. Uh, turn that on to make the fire hotter. Uh, you got your blow down if you fill too much water in the boiler. Um, let's go ahead, actually, for the sake of argument. This is your um, injector. So this is how you put more water into the boiler. We're going to overfill it just a little bit. And then this is your blow down. You turn this on to eject water and steam from the boiler. Bring that pressure down, and oh my gosh, it went down so fast. Wow. Be very careful when using that. Holy crap. Let's, uh, let's fill that back up. Again, for firing, this is your water gauge. This is taking a reading of the water from the back of the, of the boiler. So you've got all this boiler full of water. So whenever you're going uphill, this is a lot more boiler as well than the 060. So this is going to be a lot more pronounced in this than the 060 is a lot longer 
But whenever you're going uphill in this thing, the water is all going to slosh to the back and your reading is going to be inaccurate. It's going to be a little bit higher than it actually is. When you're going downhill, it's going to all slosh to the front and it's all going to be uh, you're going to your reading back here is going to be a little bit lower. So you got to keep that in mind um, as you're going. And so the only way to get a true reading is to be on flat level ground like we are right now. So be aware of that, and it's going to bob around again as you're moving and everything, and things slosh around, and honestly, just make sure that there's water there. If there, As long as there's water in there, then uh, you're good to go. I try to keep it a little bit on the higher side of things. Usually around that third is around about where I like to keep it, that uh, the top one right there. So, uh, And then, of course, you've got your fire. Make sure that you don't run out of fire. And again, running this thing is all about making sure that you're balancing your fire and water so that you're able to build enough pressure to be able to drive and do things. Speaking of driving, I'm gonna go ahead and actually I'm gonna shove a little bit more coal in the coal hole. And we are going to go ahead and, oh, and the last thing, we're not gonna do it for the sake of this this time, but this is your coal dump. You pull this lever and all the coal will simply fall out of the firebox and your fire will turn off. And that's how you turn the fire off whenever you're done. Uh, so. Uh, starting out, you have your brakes, of course, just like in the 060. Uh, your independent is this one right here. And again, as much as you apply that, so you've also got, this is your uh, brake pipe and main reservoir right there. So you can see we've applied it a little bit. The red needles come up a little bit. We're going to apply it some more. The brake is going to come up a little bit more. We're going to apply it some more. It's going to come up some more as it's going to be wherever you set it. But this is the independent brake. So again, like I said, though, it's only going to be doing the brakes on the locomotive. Not the brakes on the rest of the train, so be aware of that. If you want to brake the whole train, which is how you should be braking, uh, this is what you want to use is your train brake. Like the 060, it's got a full release position where it's going to be all the way uh, released. You're going to have lapped, your running lapped position, and that's where um, it is not going to change. Whatever pressure you've got it set at is what it's going to stay at. And then we're going to slowly... Um, oops. We're going to set it to the next notch and it's going to slowly come up and we're going to bring it back to running and it's going to stay at whatever you set it at and then of course bring it back to release and it releases and of course you can always just full dump it and of course lastly for your brakes you've got the handbrake which i'm going to go ahead and turn off so that we can get started showing you guys how to move so, unlike the 060, this locomotive has a screw reverse, and it's a weird screw reverse because it's sideways. Most screw reverses are, like, perpendicular to the boiler. This one is parallel to the boiler, and it's a little weird, but whatever. Um, instead of a Johnson bar. So this is your reverser, cutoff, reverser, Johnson bar, screw reverse, whatever you want to call it. So, you can see here there are notches. A little hard to see, but you can see them. Notches on this here. Man, everything's kind of in the way today. Um, but notches on this part of the wheel. And that white line follows your screw reverse. So if you move it forward. Um, now we're in full throttle forward. Or not throttle, full um, regulator forward. And move it back. We're in full um, regulator. This is a regulator full reverser Johnson bar backwards. Um, and so usually whenever you're running it, you want to keep it as close to that middle line there as possible. Let me get it. There we go. Now we can really see them. So you, you want to get it close to that middle line as possible uh, when you're running um, until you start to bog down. Once you do, you can increase it to get more power. The farther towards all the way that you are, uh, all the way forward that you are, the farthest towards all the way that you motherfucker the farthest towards all the way forward that you are the more power you're going to be putting down but you want it to be closest to the center line so that the closer you are to centered the more efficient you're going to be using the more efficiently you're going to be using your steam you want to be using your steam efficiently so you want that to be as close to the center as possible usually whenever you're starting we'll go ahead and move it all the way to the forward so we'll do that our brakes are all released um you have, of course, got your sander here if you run out, uh, or if you're starting to slip. You got your sander, uh, which I believe actually 
It has a couple of positions, so you can put down a little bit of sand or a lot of sand. Also, this thing doesn't have windshield wipers. Forgot to mention that. Instead, you can just open the window. And also, the windows on the sides do not have glass. And so that's the thing. Um, and then, of course, finally, you have your regulator slash throttle slash whatever you want to call it. Uh, and, of course, pulling back on that is going to get you moving. Which we're going to go ahead and do. So you can hear that sloshing sound. Remember from the 060 video, if you didn't watch that, uh, th the sloshing sound is the water buildup in the cylinders, and so that's what this final lever here is for. That is our cylinder cocks. We're going to go ahead and turn those on. And now it's releasing steam out of the pistons, which are going to help expel that water. And so at this point, we've got a job to do. Get a little bit of on-the-job training so I can show you guys how to handle this. This job is pretty heavy. Um, and so we're really going to be working this thing up to the harbor, but we're also going to have to really maintain good train handling on the way back down. So, let's go ahead and grab it and get going. Um... That was a little, uh, a little bit rough. Doesn't seem the vehicle sustained any damage. What about you? Ah, vehicle. 91. Yeah, we, we, uh, we smashed it up a little bit, but it's okay. It's going a little fast, but it's fine. Alright, so we've got our job. Head back up to the locomotive. We should be ready to go. Put it in full. I just go ahead and make sure we are fully loaded with coal. All right, so we're ready on that. Our uh, reversers all the way forward. Cylinder cocks are on. Brakes are all released. Put that one in running. And off we go. I think we can tur turn our uh, cylinder cocks off. All right, we should be pretty good to go. Uh, I'm going to try to trickle a tiny bit of water into the boiler as we're going up. We're going to try to hit this hill with a little bit of speed. All right, we're on the hill now. Uh, let's go ahead and make sure we have enough fire. How's our water doing? We got plenty of water. You don't want to overwater your engine either. You really want the water to be somewhere within that sight glass. We're going to put her wide open. We're not going to put her wide open. All right. I think we can afford to put some water in. Because this is where the grade starts to level a little bit. This is the second junction. Nope. I lied. This is the first junction. But I think it does actually start to get a little bit better. 
at this point. Make sure we got enough there. Unfortunately, he's going to lose us some pressure because we're putting water in the boiler and using it at the same time. You go ahead and coast us for a little bit just because we're... Yeah, we, uh... We're very lacking on water for a second here. I think we just hit a bit more flat ground. It seems to have really jumped up right there. Feeling a little bit scary there with the amount of water usage that seems to be happening. And it's gonna, as you can see, the water level is really gonna bob around on this one. And so you really gotta be careful, and it's gonna get kinda sketchy sometimes. You just gotta make sure that you got enough water in it, though. But the nice part about this thing is, it's actually pretty good at going reasonably fast. At this point, we can really just open her up. We don't need to be using near that much steam, though. Ah! So that's another problem with our uh, cab light, by the way, is that it can fall off. So you gotta be very careful. Uh, make sure you pick that back up. We're trying to keep water in the boiler. We've really been using it on this run. But we should be up the worst part of the hill. So it should be, like I said, smooth sailing until we get to the downhill. Then we gotta worry again. There's the downgrade in the tunnel. Typically from here, I like to try to go around about 40 all the way down into the harbor. Because it'll jump between like 40 and 60. Uh, it'll jump between like 40 and 50, but usually not under 40. Um, but it does tend to jump around a little bit between 40 and 50, and so I like to keep it on the lower spectrum. I'm gonna watch as that speed comes up a little bit. I'm gonna set up about... about a bar of pressure on the brakes. Going downhill, you just wanna make sure that you don't run out of water and that you don't run out of fire like I'm about to. Keep a bit of fire in there, uh, and at that point, honestly, you can make sure that you're uh, all the way shut off with your throttle, and you're just going to kind of coast down. The only problem with this one is it's really not great at switching, because you can't see crap. <laughs> you can't see crap. Oh, no! Daddy. It's fine. Look, it's fine. See, it's fine. Get back in. All right, through the tunnel we go. Looking good. And there's the harbor. All right, E9I, E yard is gonna be easy, 9I is gonna be easy. It may actually already be set for that. Coming into the harbor a bit spicy, but we're coming in. Listen, you gotta let them know that you're here by the uh, loud whistle and the re as you go around a corner. 
Um, all right, so E9I should be pretty easy to get to. At this point, full release, I'm just going to kind of let her coast on in. Shouldn't need any help from me. They made the whistle work a bit better with the button, I'm noticing. Huh? That one we do want. E9I. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, we're flat spotting the wheels. We're breaking the brakes. Oh boy, we're going the wrong way, boys. I didn't notice that one. Ah, he was hiding. Yeah, that can happen on occasion. All right, E9I, and we've arrived. Not without incident, but without major incident. <laughs> Nothing we couldn't recover from. A little bit of uh, literally just a misaligned switch. Oops, we gotta go. We gotta back up. It's the wrong way, Chief. Should have taken a left at Albuquerque. Um, but yeah, this thing is uh, is pretty cool. Pretty cool. Duber. There's, um, there's auto racks in the way of what I was looking at, which is lame. Um, but yeah, I really, this, oh man, this is the locomotive. This is the reason I bought this game back in the day. Like before, before this update came out, before even overhauled came out, this locomotive is the reason why I bought this game. I wanted to drive the steam locomotive and I wanted to drive it. If I ever got VR, I wanted to drive it in VR. Go ahead and set up our air. But just that feeling right there that I get every time that I blow the whistle, like, like, it's so cool. Like getting to lean out, getting to, this is the reason I bought this game is this locomotive right here. And to see it get the love and attention that it's gotten with this update, it's just really, really great. I love it so much. For 50 grand, I mean, this thing, it's a beast. It can pull a lot, right? It can pull a lot. And so, like, highly worth it. It's a bit complicated, but oh my gosh, this is the reason why I bought this game. You can run a steam engine. It's the greatest thing ever. Um... Oh yeah, 27 minutes, not too shabby. Made a good bit of good bit of dough there. But yeah, guys. Turn that on a bit more. If I put this back there, can I see more? I can! So guys, I recommend putting the lantern back on the back of the tender. I know like this exists, but like I recommend it back here because you can see uh, the gauges a little bit more. But yeah, anyway. Boy, howdy, we're going fast. <laughs> uh, let's, uh, go. We're going 40. Let's go a good bit slower. Let's start slowing down. We got places to be, but we're already there, so. Boy, howdy. Uh, do not go faster. Uh! <laughs> we 
We pulled a 485! <laughs> we pulled- I was trying to align this turntable, but then I realized, wait a minute, the train's going too fast, and then, ah, it was- I was very poorly handled, uh, I'll be honest. But the only difference between, uh, filling this thing up and filling up the, uh, 060 is that it's easier because of the location of the, um, water tank on the tender. So you're lining it up with the water tank on the tender, so it's actually, it's pretty much exactly the same as on the 060. Put the coal bunker, you know, where the coal is, underneath of the coal chute, and coal will go into the coal hole, and put the, uh, water spout directly, and you shouldn't even have to move the pipe. It should just be, like, straight where it is, because it's sitting right in the middle of the track where it is. Uh, so you should be good to go at that point. Alright, boys, um... I'm going to keep it real with you. It's not going to explode because it doesn't have any pressure anymore. So, uh, we're just gonna end it with the boom- with, or with the- with the bin. Obviously, this thing does explode. Apparently, it's a little harder to do than I thought it was. But, uh, with that, I hope you guys enjoyed and found this video useful. Um, this is a great engine. This- this is the reason I bought this game. This is the reason I got into this game in the first place. And it is- it is amazing. I love it. With that, if you did enjoy it and found it useful, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe. Uh, so about more of these, we're running out of locomotives. There's the DE2 and the DE6. Now, here's the thing. I don't think I'm going to do a video on the DE2 unless you guys are begging for it. But what I am going to do is I am going to do a video on the DE6. However, the DE6 has been in the game for like two years since overhaul. It's not exactly new, and there hasn't been a ton that changed about it, but they have promised us a DE6 slug, which, um, if you don't know what that is, whenever they release it, I will be re releasing a tutorial on it. So, but I'm also at the mercy of the, uh, devs at the moment, and so this video is, like, two weeks in advance, so if they add it in the next two weeks, then there'll be a video next week. Um, but if not, uh, basically as soon as they release the DE6 slug, I will do a full video on both it and the DE6 together because they work together and only with each other. We do also do a series of this game every Friday morning at around about 11 a.m. U.S. Central. So be sure to come check that out over on twitch.tv slash roguelootergaming. We also, uh, edit and post those over here on the YouTube channel, uh, on Monday at 10 a.m. U.S. Central. So, uh, if you do in fact miss the stream, I edit the stream VOD and post it to the YouTubes over here, uh, on Mondays. So, be sure to stay tuned for that, and you're probably seeing that right now on your screen, because that's where I'm gonna leave this one. I hope you guys enjoyed, and we will see you in the next one. Later, everybody.